Hey, hey guys, what's up? We are live from CES. We are. I'm Jordan We're Crook. We're back. I'm Jordan Crook. Hi, Jordan. I'm Greg. I'm Greg and Parrick. Great much. to meet you. Yeah. Okay. So, anyways, we are really excited. We're going to start off with Samsung, which is like the, the fifth horseman, apparently, according to MG. Yeah. Really important player here at CES. We're going to start off with a tour of the booth. Check it out. It's like They're really, massive, really, massive, really massive awesome. massive booth. <laughs> it's massive and massive, and it's really, really awesome. So let's walk over here and kind of see who we can, who we can get a hold of. We want to see like phones, tablets, and like really cool TVs. Phones, tablets, and really, how much time do you have? Because we have a pretty big booth. Well, Samsung's really important, so we will. Your favorite stuff that you can fit in about five, maybe ten minutes. Five to ten. Okay, okay that sounds great. All right. So yep. To hold, drag it. Yep. And now it's going to ask you. See, you have multi view here, so you have your email there that you can have set up where you can check your email and still have the web going simultaneously. And because, of course, the big 5.5 inch display, you're able to do two things. That's true multitasking on a device that size. What about when you turn it into landscape? In landscape mode? Yeah, that, right now, it's, as you see, it's just stuck so in factory mode. Yeah, it's just right there. All right, very cool. nice, very cool. So that's like the future of multitasking on mobile, yeah, right? Most multitasking in a, in a small portable uh, you know, phone tablet type device, so yeah. The one that you see in the front to the left is actually our 85 inch ultra high definition TV, which will actually be shipping in the first half of this year. Wow, okay, so one of them is available, the 85. Yes. The 85 is available this year. The 110 is more of a technology demonstrator, and the one that you see at the top is a 95 inch, um, and that one is also just a uh, demonstration of technology to show you the possibilities of what's available with it. So will we ever see like a 110 inch? And if we do, I mean, what is a price on something like that? Who knows, more than I can afford. More than I can afford, that's for sure. If you can't afford it, we're gonna be. Wow. Well, we you know. can go in on it together. Maybe we could try that. We'd see if that works for us. So that, yeah. Are you married? I don't know how your wife would feel about me living in your house to just watch your TV. We do have a guest room. Oh, perfect. All right, deal done. So is this the best I mean, in, t in terms of the different technologies, LCD, OLED, whatever? What What is the best? Well, uh, many people would say that this is the best. I mean, it has essentially, you can make pure black with a TV and you can get to pure white, which means that you have essentially infinite contrast ratio with the TV. Uh, which is great and in a very small form factor that's very thin, it's very light. Uh, it, the motion is incredibly smooth on it. Because we're using true RGB OLED, you have an amazing color palette. You can create all of these subtle shades of every picture to really give it a lifelike picture. Awesome. So how much is the 55-inch OLED going to cost people? Well, I don't know yet. Price has not been announced. Oh, come yeah, on. You guys say you promise you're going to ship it, I but know. if you don't give a price, that's kind of like, well, maybe, but we might. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We're a little early on price. Price will be, uh, well, we'll announce pricing in March. Do you even have a range, though? I mean, what's I just to get an idea for our readers of what an OLED TV will cost them generally. Speaking. Okay, so how about more than $5,000 and less than $50,000? More than five and less than 50. Okay, that's a $45,000 swing we got yeah, going so. there. Well, that's a cool. car somewhere in that <laughs> somewhere uh, around a car. Uh, it will be um, a very inexpensive car. Okay, there we right. go. Perfect. That's fair enough. All right. So, what else can we talk about? Very cool. And so, do all of the, we just saw three different versions of four actually yep. of TVs. All of them come with Samsung Smart Hub and Smart Interaction. Of course they do. Smart Hub, Smart Interaction. They all have the Smart Evolution Kit, which we haven't even talked about yet, which is a great thing. Uh, but uh, you know. Um, certainly has all of the smart functionality that you would expect to see in the TV and we've even taken that to the next level uh, this year over last year. He's stealing things. Thief. So this is a smart evolution kit for 2013. This is something that could be added to a premium, premium only 2012 TV um, and uh, it basically uh, takes the dual core processor that's in last year's TV, makes it a 1.3 gigahertz quad core processor it improves the GPU, gives it more system memory, so that uh, it makes you know last year's TV perform like a 2013. Plus, you gain all of the new uh, smart interface um, and all the increased functionality. It'll even make the picture look better. So, if you had to guess, with Evolution Kit, how long would you expect this to actually be supported? So, if I bought, because it's, it's a reason to go out and buy a new Samsung TV sure. right now, yeah. you know. So, in the future. I don't have to buy new TVs because I can upgrade it. But then right. eventually, you guys are going to want to sell more TVs. You, you're right about that. And so the average consumer buys a TV about every actually now because of computers. It's about seven years. It used to be ten, but it's now about seven years. Uh, we will support the 2012 TV until 2016. So you can you will see a four-year supporting. You know, we'll drag your TV along for four years. 
That's pretty good. Where Where I, good. I mean, like you said, consumers upgrade once every like seven years. Right, exactly. So I mean, what is the? How can you say, oh, you're going to get more system memory? Maybe you're going to get a faster processor? Unless you're like a tech geek, that's kind of a hard sell, right? What's the cost of this thing? Uh, cost has not been announced yet, but it's going to be. We think it's going to be south of five hundred dollars. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, you'll see it uh, actually ship in March, and we'll have, we'll announce uh, pricing at that point. Um, but um, you know, it, it'll, it's very actually very simple to install as well. So it just simply plugs in the back of the TV. It's a simple upgrade that somebody could do, and um, you know, it's one of those things that if you don't see the value in it this year, fine, you don't have to buy it this year. Your you might see the value, value next year. year, but you may see the value next year as things improve in the 2014 model. So you know, things will always move forward. Very cool. So can we like can I like wave at this and it'll show me something cool? Uh, actually, well, we have a, a live demonstration right over here, and he'll be able to show you with the brand new remote control as well. So the whole idea in the Smart Hub is you have five panels, um, and the first one is called On TV, which I'll get James to go to right now. So this is the first one that pops up when you turn your TV on, um, and it shows you various different uh, uh, things here. So. Um, it's going to suggest things that you would normally watch, it, like say in the morning. Um, so if you normally watch The View, it tells you how far into your program uh, The View is right now so that you can make that choice if you want to actually jump in 25 or 30 minutes into the program or whatever the next thing is, if you want to watch The People's Court, you know that it comes on in 34 minutes. So you can help make that choice. You can S recommendation is brand new, right? S recommendation is also brand new, which is basically our way of helping you decide what to watch on TV. That's the whole idea. So can you wave at this TV and make it do something? Uh, it is not set up for that. Here, it, they, they can show you the gesture controls over in the gesture control area. In the gesture control. Okay, so for right now, can you just show me like the coolest stuff that you can do with this remote? And can I actually show my, my camera the remote real quick? Because it's pretty sleek. Yeah. So is this like a little touch? That is a touch area, yeah. Awesome. So right now we have like recommended movies and TV shows. You can this see what's on right now. Streaming content. Yeah. Uh, and then this was this was the panel he was showing you earlier. Yeah. This is your applications. So it's all very easily organized. Uh, and then here you have uh, basically recommendations that your friends make for like YouTube videos that will show up here. Um, and then if you want to do Skype, it's all your last eight. Skype conversation people are all right there. That's really cool. And then what's the one to the far right, the photo one? Is that just a slideshow of your photos? No, this is content, music, movies, and video that you have already uh, either on your phone, on your on your computer, that sort of thing. Very cool. Very, very cool. So what else do you have to show me, man? Uh, what else do you want to see? you want to see some audio stuff? We can maybe look at a little audio stuff. You little into a little bit of audio? Yeah, we got like about two more minutes left here, so let's let's look at a little audio and then we'll head out. So you know, last year we came out with a home theater system that had tubes built in it as well. We've uh, and, and we had a sound dock that incorporated tubes as well. We now have a sound bar that has vacuum tubes in it. It's very loud. <laughs> it is a little bit loud. want to give you control of that. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, there you go. We got control there. All right, so that's great. Uh, so the whole idea is, again, we're trying to use the tubes to make the sound seem a little bit warmer, a little bit more natural than you would normally get uh, out of a digital source. Uh, and so the sound bar certainly will do that for you. Um, it's also uh, HDMI. You can get your audio from HDMI, but you could also get it from Bluetooth. Uh, and it has a, what we call a sound share feature. Uh, where you can connect it via Bluetooth from the TV to the soundbar and do it and, and play the uh, wireless audio that way. So is Bluetooth coming along far enough to really get a, a, a like HD quality sound in, in a soundbar? Well, we're using the Aptex codec, which is the basically the lossless compression version of Bluetooth for audio, uh, to try and make it sound as good as it possibly can. Does it sound as good as HDMI? I don't think so, but it sounds pretty good. And so we'll have a lot of people that that's the way they'll connect it. Very cool. Well, Ryan, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. It's been a fun time. Have a great show. I think we're going to head to a new booth. How do you feel right. about that? I'm down. Let's go. Follow All right. Uh, following me. I think we should try to go back out that way because it's just more visually appealing over right. there. So we're going to walk back out through. And you guys can't get enough of Samsung. I don't know if you guys have seen or if, if we've made it clear yet, but there's actually a, a giant screen.
screen. What was it? LCD, we are encompassed LCD, by Samsung right now. But it's have, literally a screen that goes Samsung. around the entire. <laughs> my voice cracked. The entire <laughs> booth, and this booth is probably the biggest one in in the whole show, right? Yeah, I mean, this and Sony. This and Sony, yeah. And this booth, I believe, I was told last year, it cost just over a million. So I think this year is probably about 1.5 million. <laughs> yeah, because it is cooler than it was last year. Yeah. Not to mention we've got... Does have random moving floating yeah, TVs. Yeah, can we look at this? These, these TVs float, just in case you want your TV to move as yeah, you that's, watch that's it. What I, do. I hate when my movie is just like static on the wall and not moving around and being horrible. Well, the thing so. for me is I like, when I'm watching TV, I really like to do the hammer time dance. And so <laughs> if I'm doing that and the TV's moving with me, then it's actually much easier. It's perfect. Yeah, it works really well. So we're, we're getting close to the end. As you can see, this is a massive booth, and it's it's very exciting. We did we did miss the Galaxy Note 10.1, but the good That's news good. is that we were going to be with you guys for the next three 300 days. 300 years. Oh, three days. <laughs> three, three days. days. It's going to feel like 300 years. <laughs> um, but we are going to be with you for the next three days, and chances are, you know, we can go back and see some other stuff. And if there's anything specific that you do want to see, we are checking CES, CES Crunch. Hashtag CES Crunch. Hashtag on CES Crunch on Twitter. 